Consciousness is one link independent origination. Does that mean that for anything to arise, there needs to be consciousness involved somehow? So plants only arise or exist because the consciousness of sentient beings is involved. Is it then the consciousness in other realms that supports the arising of an initial human planet of just materiality? So that's a complex question. <laughs> And I'll try to answer it in a way that doesn't confuse you or overwhelm you with the laws of causality. So the first thing that we need to know about causality is that everything is related to everything else somehow, eventually, if you go through enough causal links. It's all interrelated. There's nothing in existence which stands completely apart from any other conditioned thing. So the answer to this question, in essence, is yes, in that everything that exists is related to consciousness somehow. But not everything that exists has, condition, has consciousness as its main cause, or as its first cause. Very far from it. The second thing that we need to understand about this question is that the causes that we see in dependent origination, the 12 links of dependent origination, is a very small subset of the whole of causality. The 12 links of dependent origination are a very long way from the totality of what the Dharma tells us about causality. It's just the 12 most important links that explain why we get born again and again. So there's a lot to say about causality that is not included in dependent origination. So whilst we have consciousness in the 12 links of dependent origination, that doesn't mean that it therefore must be the cause for everything. That's a misunderstanding or a placing too much importance on those 12 links of dependent origination for what it means for the whole of existence. When it comes to materiality, which this question is really about what are the causes for non-physical things, things like the physical earth, the trees, the plants. So the material world is coming into existence based on four causes. The first cause is consciousness. So almost every moment of consciousness, almost every moment of consciousness, is producing materiality. This is a type of causality that science doesn't really understand. Consciousness obviously is completely non-physical and yet it is producing materiality inside the bodies of living beings. We call this one mind-born materiality. We then have karma-born materiality, which is also indirectly produced by the mind. And this means volitional actions that were done in the past can produce materiality in the present. Now this is an even more wacky kind of conditionality because it's not only something non-physical, volition, producing something physical, it's also volition in the past, which doesn't even exist anymore producing something physical now. And we call this one karma-born materiality. This one also only exists in the body of living beings. And it is things like the materiality in the eye that's sensitive to light, the materiality in the ear that's sensitive to sound, the materiality in the nose that's sensitive to smell, so on, heart-based materiality. We then have materiality that is born of nutriment. And this would be things that we take into the body from outside that nourish us. So most obviously the food that we eat, but it could also be the air that we breathe, the water we drink, things that we put on our skin, basically anything that we're taking in from outside. So this materiality in and of itself is not produced by the mind. An apple or whatever we eat, it's not produced by the mind. But in order for that nutrient-born materiality to give rise to new generations of materiality, basically to do its function, it needs the support of karma-born materiality. Which is why if you put an apple on a rock, the rock doesn't eat it, right? The rock isn't nourished by it, it just sits there. Because the rock doesn't have the karma-born materiality to help in the digesting and the processing of that nutriment. So nutriment-born materiality in and of itself is not produced by consciousness, but it needs karma-born materiality. It needs materiality of a physical being, of a living being, to, 
do its function, if you like. And then the fourth kind of materiality is what we call temperature-born materiality. And what this means is that every single tiny, tiny little particle of materiality has a temperature. It might be a very cold temperature, it might also be a very hot temperature or somewhere in the middle, but it has a temperature. And that temperature can produce another generation of materiality in its place. So, all materiality, as we know, is momentarily arising and passing away. And yet, things like the floor, the rug, have got the illusion of being there for a long time, of not arising and passing away. And that's because the temperature-born materiality in those things is, being, is producing another generation, another generation, another generation, the same in its place. And so it gives the illusion of continuity. And because of the flow of the four elements, that temperature-born materiality can also change and morph over time. And temperature-born materiality is what makes up almost all of, well, it makes up all of inanimate reality, of inanimate materiality. So it makes up the trees and the plants and the rocks and the oceans and, and all of the things. So that temperature-born materiality does not have consciousness as its productive cause. It doesn't have consciousness as its near cause. And yet it is not, if you went through enough causal links and chains, it's not completely disconnected from consciousness either. That makes sense? Well done. All right, let's move on before we go down a deep, deep rabbit hole of causality. <laughs>